Hi guys, welcome back to another video from CodeHell. Today I will show you how to build next level animations with new GSAP interactions in Webflow. In this project you can see beautiful and stunning animation effects like this that I created very easily in Webflow. Especially for the stagger effect on this heading and paragraph text, each letter and word looks like it appears gradually one by one, this is amazing! Then, if you look here, there is also a floating effect that moves continuously on this image so that it makes this website much more alive. And not only that, if I move the cursor here, these two beautiful border animations will keep circling the image in their path and the rotation doesn't look flat like linear, but has a more rhythmic tempo. Then when the cursor goes away, the animation is paused. When hovering again, the movement continues, not reset to the beginning. And most interestingly, I created all these animations directly from the Webflow visual panel. So, you need to know, Webflow recently released a powerful new interactions feature. This latest interactions feature from Webflow opens the door to create GSAP level animations directly from the visual panel. With full control over every transition, an intuitive horizontal timeline structure, and a reusable animation system, Webflow opens a new way to build motion design quickly, remain efficient, and with classy results. So, in this video, I will show you how to create an animation that looks complex but can be made easily in Webflow. Alright, here I have already prepared the static design beforehand. Just one section, fairly simple, because our main focus this time is how to bring this layout to life with animation using the new interactions now powered by GSAP in Webflow. Now, if we look at the Interactions panel, Webflow has added a new interaction option, which is Interactions with GSAP. So we can create complex and smooth animations directly from the Webflow UI. And here, Webflow provides several types of triggers that we can use to start the animation, such as click, hover, page load, scroll, and also custom event for more specific needs. Okay, when we select the interactions with GSAP version, on the left panel this lightning icon will appear. This panel is where we manage and set all the GSAP animations we create in this project. And now I want to create a page load interaction. Here are various actions that we can directly use to animate elements. But here, I will proceed and choose the custom action because I want to define the animation values myself according to my needs. So at the top here, we can set the target element we want to animate. In this section, we can choose the type of target, can be based on class, same as trigger, element ID, attribute, or custom selector if we want to target elements with a custom CSS selector. So this gives us more flexibility in selecting elements. And in this case, I will use class. After that, enter the class name of the element you want to animate. I will target this heading text. Then we can also set the scope to determine which element will be animated, all matching elements, or specific elements such as children, siblings, parent, and its descendants. Okay, after the target is set, we can start setting the animation properties here. We can define how long the animation lasts through duration and when it starts with start delay. Then there's the Ease option, to set the animation movement rhythm as we want. Below that is the Animated Properties section. This is the core of the animation. If we click this plus icon, various animation properties that we can use will appear. With all these options, we have very flexible control over the element we want to animate, in terms of transformation, appearance, or even class logic in Webflow. Then here, we have from as the initial value and to as the final value of the property we want to animate. All right, let's start animating the heading element. First, I will use this MoveX property. So here I can set the value to 100 pixels, for example. And because the default final value of MoveX here is zero as I want, I will disable to. Then for the duration here, I will set it to let's say 0.3 seconds. And if I click play, our text has been animated from the right as far as 100 pixels to 0 pixels or the starting point when we placed it on the canvas. Okay, then we will use another property which is opacity and scale. And here I think I don't need move Y, so I can delete it. For opacity, I set the value from 0 to 100% and for scale from 0 to 1. So when I click play again, the text appears while moving to its original position and also enlarging to its original size. Okay, 
Not quite finished yet. Next I want to make this text animation more interesting so I will make these letters appear gradually one by one using stagger, and this is one of my favorite features from the new Webflow interactions. Now let's click this drop down, and here we have total time and offset time. If we choose total time, we set the total duration for all elements to finish animating. Webflow will automatically divide the time evenly. Meanwhile, offset time allows us to set a fixed delay between elements, so each element will appear with a consistent time gap, according to the value we set. So just choose whichever fits best with the animation rhythm we want to achieve. Here I will choose offset time, and I will set the value, let's say, um, 0.05 seconds. Then we can also set where the stagger animation starts from through this from option. There are several options such as starting from the first element, from the edges to the center, random, or from a specific element we determine. And here I will stick with start. Below that is the ease option to set the transition between elements, then grid to determine the direction of the stagger if we are animating elements in a grid layout. Next here I will enable split text so it can be animated one by one. In the split by section, we can choose whether to split the text by word, line, or letter, depending on the animation effect we want to achieve. And here I will choose letter. Then there is also a mask option, if we want to add clipping when the element appears, but for now I will leave it as none. And now, you can see, the text appears one by one gradually. Because we enabled split text and used stagger, the animation feels more rhythmic and alive, not appearing all at once. So I think this is one of the very very powerful features and the result really brings the appearance to life. And not only for text, you can also use stagger for other elements. Okay, next we will animate this subheading text. And what you need to know is, here we can also reuse part or all of the properties we have already made for other elements, so we don't have to start from scratch if we want to create a similar animation, and maybe there are also some values I want to change later. So now I will continue and rename this action to heading, stagger from right, for example. Then I will click this bookmark icon that says save as preset, and we will give it the same name, then click save. After that, we can see in the action preset section, the stagger from right animation we just made has been saved and is ready to be reused. All right, I will click this back icon, and in the actions section, I can click this plus icon. And now, I can click stagger from right down here. Okay, you can see, we don't have to set everything from the beginning. And for this action, I will make a few adjustments. We will start in the target section. Here we will target the element with the class, hero subheading. Okay, before I continue, you can see here, now Webflow presents a new horizontal timeline. Each animation is displayed in the form of a block along the timeline, so we can see and arrange the sequence more visually and precisely. It also makes it easier for us to adjust the timing, duration, or stack of complex animations more flexibly. This is much more intuitive compared to the previous vertical timeline. Then here, Webflow also provides several additional controls for timeline navigation. We can adjust the animation preview speed, enable loop mode so that the animation plays continuously when previewed, and also enable reverse to see the animation played backward. Then we can also zoom in or zoom out to view the animation blocks as we want, and there is also fit timeline to immediately adjust the view so that the entire animation block is visible on one screen. Alright, I think this horizontal timeline is very very helpful and makes it easier for us when working with long or complex animations. And I really like it. Okay, now let's continue. To determine when the animation starts, we can do it by dragging this animation block easily as we want, but if we prefer to enter the start delay value directly, we can also do it from here, let's say, 0.35 seconds. And lastly for this text, I will change the offset time value to 0.1 seconds so that the animation runs slightly longer. And now if we click play, the result will look like this, okay, looks great. Then I will also rename it to subheading stagger from right. All right, next for this description text. So, to add a new action, we can also do it from this timeline, and we just need to double click from here to create a new action. Okay, now for the element with the class, hero description. For the duration we will change the value to 0.3 seconds, 
Start delay 0.8 seconds, ease, power one in. Next for the animated properties, it seems I don't need these three properties, so I can delete them. Then I will add Y%. Percent. Now I will enable from and disable to because the default from this end value is already as I want. Then for opacity in the from section we fill in zero so the animation starts from a hidden state. And for Y% percent we fill in 100% so that the initial position of the element shifts downward before returning to its original position. So, if we see now, our description text has been animated and appears from below while slowly fading in. Okay, next I will also use stagger so I can click this drop down, and I will select offset time again, then for the value I will fill in 0.03 seconds. After that, I will also enable split text, split by word, and I want to add clipping when the element appears, so I can click here and select word. And now we can see, each word appears one by one from below while fading in. Then if we play it from the beginning, all the text animations look more rhythmic, engaging, and of course also very smooth because it uses the GSAP engine. Then I will also rename this action to description stagger from bottom. Okay, next for the button. So I can double click again here. Then I will target the element with the class BTN. For the duration, 0.5 seconds, start delay, 2 seconds, and power one and out. After that, we can delete move X and scale, because we will only use opacity and move Y. Then just like before, I will enable from and disable to. Next, I will also set 0% for opacity, and 100 pixels for move Y. That's it, quite simple. And now we can see the button element appearing while rising from below and fading in smoothly. And, I will also rename this animation to button, slide in up. Alright, lastly for this image element, I can double click again here. Then we will target the class hero IMG wrapper. Duration, 1 second. Start delay, 1.8 seconds. And ease, power 1 and out. Okay. And now we will only use opacity and scale, so I can delete move X and move Y because I don't need them. And again, enable from and disable to. Then zero for opacity, and zero as well for scale so that the element appears from a small size then zooms into a normal size. So now we can see the result. The image element appears from invisible and small, then enlarges to normal size with a smooth effect. Simple but quite powerful to attract attention. Then I will also rename it to Image Zoom In. Okay, next I want to add another animation for this image element. So, I can double click again here. Then target the element with the class Hero IMG Wrapper again. Now I set the duration to 2 seconds, then start delay same as the previous effect which is 1.8 seconds. And for ease now I will choose Sign In Out. This time I will only use the Move Y property and enable both of these options from and to because I want to set both values myself. First for the from section, I set the value to minus 40 pixels so that the element starts from a slightly upper position. While for the two, I set the value to 40 pixels so that the element moves down a bit as the animation runs. Then in the repeat section, I enable infinite so the animation keeps running endlessly, and I also enable reverse so the movement goes back and forth. So after going down, the element will go up again smoothly, then keep repeating rhythmically. Okay, let's see the result. Now I want to see it directly through the preview here. You can see, now overall, our website becomes much more attractive and dynamic than before. And for this image element, now it moves up and down smoothly and continuously. It looks as if this image is floating slowly. Okay, now I will also rename this animation to Image Float Loop for example. Alright, next I will add a hover effect to this image element. So when we hover here, the circle decoration will be animated. So now I will select hover, and then select custom again. Then, in this hover settings section, we can set how the animation runs when the element is touched by the cursor. Here I will still select class, and we will target the parent of the circle decoration which is hero IMG wrapper. Then type here determines when the animation is triggered. 
If we select mouse enter, it means the animation will be triggered when the cursor enters the element, while mouse leave, the animation will run when the cursor leaves the element. And we will use both of these types. Now let's continue with mouse enter. Then, this trigger section allows us to determine when the animation runs on hover. It can be every time the cursor enters, only on the first, second, or based on odd or even order. And if we want the animation to appear only on a specific order, for example on the third or eighth hover, we can choose the custom option and specify the number manually. And here, I will still choose each mouse enter. Next, in this control section, we can choose how the animation will run when the interaction occurs. Play from beginning will always start the animation from the beginning, play will continue from the last position or current position, reverse plays the animation in reverse, and so on. Here I will choose play, so the animation will continue from the current position, not repeat from the beginning. Then we can also set delay and speed to adjust the timing and speed of the transition. So, instead of being curious, you can try exploring directly in Webflow. Okay, next here we will add one more hover trigger. We can fill it with the same element as in mouse enter. For type, now I choose mouse leave. And for control, I will choose pause so the animation pauses temporarily when the cursor leaves the element. Alright, now we can go back into this action. And here, we will target the circular decoration element. Then for the duration, I can set it to 1 second and sign in out. Next I can delete all these properties, and I want to add the rotate property. Okay, for the two, here I will set it to 360 degrees, so the element will rotate one full turn when the animation is run. And lastly, here I will also enable infinite so the element rotates continuously without stopping. And now I will also rename it. Okay, now let's see the result. You can see, because I placed the trigger on the wrapper element, so when I hover over the parent, the decoration element starts rotating continuously without stopping as long as the cursor remains there. And because I used sign in out, the animation doesn't feel flat like linear, but has a more rhythmic tempo and the movement becomes more patterned. Then once the cursor leaves, the animation is paused. When hovered again, the movement continues, not reset to the beginning. Alright, now if we look directly in the browser, this is the final result. A fully animated personal portfolio website using the latest interactions from Webflow. This combination of Webflow and GSAP gives us full control to create high-performance, smoother, and stunning animations. So, if you are a designer, developer, or anyone who wants to create a standout website, Webflow has everything you need to grow and take your visual ideas to the next level. So, instead of being curious, you can directly explore Webflow through the link in the description of this video. Alright, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video, and see you in the next video.